both went on everybody else's show. I don't know if they're going to do that. But no, he said the same way. I bet. Neither one of them went on the Blackout show. I bet. Right, cool. Yeah, same like, way. Like, both of them, and shout outs to them because they're both talented people. Very. Masterpiece was a masterpiece. Son. <laughs> they both came on my show first. And I'm not bragging or nothing like that. It's never been that serious. Talk like, your whatever. Shit. Talk but your it's shit. more so just like, you know, other people have been on other people's show. I'm a I'm a I'ma say I'ma say a name because black girl wants us to be petty today. So <laughs> shout out to Live Johnson Johnson. That's I another nigga, yeah. Saying y'all go call right Let's when go. I start. Talk going. about it. <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> Who is it? Katie? Let's talk about it. Who is it? <laughs> I got I got the semi ready. Yeah. Yo, I'm sad. <laughs> No, girl, it's her. Give me a second. Of course. All right, do your thing. <laughs> but not like Live had, Live was on a, a bunch of the shows, and then I see him. Both deep. him and um Katie asked me maybe like once or twice why he didn't come on my show. Like maybe you know it was his music or whatever. I'm like nah, you just been on bad shows on this same station. Like yeah, it just doesn't make sense. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. Everybody that comes on my show is not recycled. Now, Blackout had Mickey Fax first. <laughs> and I was Fina Finiti Scott. Mickey. Yeah. And I never got her. But we ain't gonna talk about that. Yo, I Because you, had you still the room. owe me that. You had the room. So even when I leave. I didn't even hit her up for it. I don't know. Listen, y'all better keep That's trying. She coming on YouTube, all right? Don't play with me. <laughs> Uh, we want to um, oh yeah. Yeah, let's go. What's up, Katie? I asked once, first of all. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening to the whole shit. <laughs> Second of all, in terms of Cena and Nequasia, I thought I saw Nequasia from DTF. Didn't even know she was on your show. <laughs> yep, she came. I, I saw her right after. I think it was. Which event was it? The Halloween event, John? Mm-hmm. Yeah. She performed at the Halloween event, and John was like, you know, talking his shit or whatever. And I'm like, oh, you know what? I got a show. It's kind of new or whatever. It's only been a couple months, but I would love to have you on my show. She was the first. That was the first show she came on. And then I think she did your show right after mine. Mm. So it's fair to, that, yeah. I wasn't listening to the show. But being a medium for about 10 years, and then as soon as he did my first one, he Decided to hop on 25 shows after that. Yeah. Just... Yes, Phenom has the record now. Most yeah. shows. Most, yeah. yeah. Yes, he does. Shout he, out to Phenom. He's been interviewed 27 times on the station. Yeah. Yo, 27. we got 27 shows? No. Like... We <laughs> had. Yeah. Oh my god. 27 times. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. Yo, listen. Yo, shout Thank out to you, Katie. I appreciate you. We are definitely still going to get case to the Okay, I got my own record. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pop out and uh, we gonna we gonna eat and you gonna cook me some um, spaghetti. And wait, oh, sauce. I definitely am though. But in terms, by the way, about the legend fashion on the moon, get out the DeLorean with Chris Rivers and have that shit sent up there. <laughs> I see what you did there. Yo, we in Yo. it. We in it. That's a two seater though. Unless you getting like like a bunch of fucking DeLoreans. Or niggas are fitting it. Ain't no trunk either. So <laughs> lap up. <laughs> uh, uh, how you gonna lap? Mm. Mm. Like, yeah. <laughs> Talk about it. Fashion on the moon. I am with the shits. The first fashion show Yo, can you imagine moon. bitches with astronaut outfits with their ass out somehow? <laughs> yes. Oh, Damn, it's a wrap. It. Oh, no. It's yes. a wrap. No. I am so with it. No. I'm so oh my God. with it. And the, and the guys can like be like, can they have like their, 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 their like? A bathing suit type of. I can picture. I, I can picture. What you trying to say? No. Like, no, I can picture some little. I can picture some little Uzi niggas what with some like for? with some skinny jean moon pants and shit. Oh my god. Nah, I can't. Thank you for calling in, Katie. I love you. Yeah. Later. <laughs> <laughs> later, Katie. No, Told you. So dead. You gotta start. You gotta start talking to NASA. <laughs> oh, oh my god. You know what? All right. Twenty. Twenty. Uh, Twenty. 2020 with Kanye's president. <laughs> what? Yo, facts. Oh, Let me God. tell you. Kanye is going to... Um, Either him or The Rock. Him or The Rock, yeah. I'm going with The Rock because... Yeah. The Rock I'm, I'm going to go with the person that doesn't have mental issues. Wait, The Rock is... is the well, they yeah, it's speculation. Kanye is not mentally sane enough yeah. for me to be... I mean, I'm already no. not comfortable with, with 
the current president. But like, I'm not gonna be comfortable with. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I feel a little bit more comfortable. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I don't. I, I don't yeah. know. Like, I don't want to say really. I'm, I'm. He's been displaced too long. Like he, yeah. he's not. He's not black. our country. Like, yeah. <laughs> he's not black anymore. His skin is still the same. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I don't know. I can't. Yeah. But, but yeah, my whole point was that, like, you know, I've been asked, and it's like, mm, I don't want to tell you no, but I'm going to just, like, shy through your email rather than just, like, mm, sorry, yeah. no, this is why. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so there was that. But he had Mickey Facts before me. I mean, I'm a bigger fan. Like, was it? You, you, you definitely are. Yeah. You definitely are. So. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, you know, it, it was what it was. Um, Chris, I think there was, a, there, was a, there was some months between that, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then he also didn't know that I had Chris Rivers even coming up last week. So yeah, that wasn't even, that was kind of just like... Yeah, that was crazy. Coincidence. That was yeah. crazy. Great minds think alike. So um, I had him on Thursday. He had him on Monday. But aside yeah. from that, like... Man, please. I, I get what you're saying by the whole competition thing. Oh, definitely. You've you been bringing some, some of this up there. I see it. Yeah. I'll be paying attention to I'll try. I'll do one little. I, I want to give a quick shout out to Koi Finesse as well. Yeah. He actually shouted out Dying on a YouTube video. I got to find the video. Hey. Oh, that's he a you out. And that's why when you I made the it. post about Chris Rivers, I mentioned Koi Finesse as a you know, thank you for shouting out the station. Oh, I didn't see none of that. I got, I got to find the video. He yeah, shouted you out. Shouted me out. That's what's up. Okay. Listen, Koi. Don't hmm. play. Don't play. Don't play. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, all right. So after the whole enact uh, program, how did you wind up taking? Like, did you take music seriously from then? Because that's from a really then. small. That's a really young age. Because I know a lot of people. They say, "Oh, I started when I was seven. 14. They started like, yeah, oh. real young. Oh. And then, but I've been taking it seriously two years, three nah. years, or since I was twenty-one. Nah, um, after I got off stage, composition books upon composition books, just lyrics, stories, everything. Like, I didn't have a studio or anything, but I knew I had written. So if I got into the studio, I would be ready. When did you start recording? Honestly, I didn't start recording until I think I was like, um, I first got into the studio, I think around 14 or 15, one of those ages. Mm -hmm. And it was like my friend's father's studio or some <laughs> shit like that. And he coined it then, and he was like, yo, out of everybody, you got that story flow, that storyline type of flow. So you have to be like somewhere either in the beginning or an end, because you like, whatever. Um, I didn't really didn't get in the studio actually recording actual songs, and shit was mixed until uh, probably senior year. Once I got out of school, I was at my nigga's, my, my nigga Ace's house. Well, not cool no more or whatever, but I would go to his house <laughs> and... Yeah, nah, I mean, you know, shit happens, you grow apart, you grow distant, yeah, you know, no disrespect to him, he's a, he's a great guy, right. but yeah, I would record at his house, and once I had the, the, you know, nigga lived up the block, albums upon albums, like, mad demos, and then I got the Fruity Loops and everything I needed myself, mm -hmm. it sounded like bullshit, because I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, yeah. but please believe the fire was there, I had albums every fucking, every week, Tupac shit, yeah. yeah. Where did you come up with Black Out the Rubber? Oh. I'm gonna need to know. <laughs> so, okay. I know. Nah, that's cool. I Black mean, I know, like, you know, Dark Side, is that how you got Black Out? Nah, actually, no. Oh, let's hear it. Oh, Dark Side came way later on. So, Black Out happened when I was, I mean, Black Out originated from two rap names. The first one I was always known as was Knockout. That's how I was introduced when I was in Flush and High and I was trying to get my name out. Every every staircase cipher there was, every time niggas was in the gym or in the lunchroom, there was a cipher, niggas was going back and forth with lyrics, I was there. So I always prided myself on having like punchlines because you know, this is when um, Banks was out and you know, yeah, Pat Poos and that. lyricism of punchlines meant something. Right. So that was where that came from. And then it, it started coming around that time too when Cassidy came out and then T.I. when they were battling themselves. Mm. So that's where Black Play came from. So Knockout was punchlines. Actually, no, Knockout was actually more tongue twisters and lyricism. Mm -hmm. Black Play was more punchlines and just, you know, street shit. 
Right. So I combined the two because after a while I just felt like that was corny. I didn't want to come out and doing something that somebody else was already doing. And I felt like I wanted to do something where I wanted to give my entire self to the audience. I didn't want to give myself off in sections like, oh, side B, you got this type of shit. Nah, I just wanted to give everybody all of me. Right. So I combined the two. When I started recording at my nigga Ace's house, it just, the rebel just happened. I just mm -hmm. started naturally recording songs that had to deal with actual issues. As wild as I am, I wasn't talking about that wild shit. I was talking about, you know, the, the, the actual negative effects drug dealing has. I was talking about um, promiscuous women, why they are like that, how they are like that, um, stripping, things of that nature, mm -hmm. just being in the streets. Um, I was just talking about a lot of like conscious, emotional, thought-provoking things. So that's when the rubble happened because I was going against the grain. I didn't want to talk about strip clubs. I didn't want to talk about drug dealing in a po positive since I didn't want to talk about gang banging, I didn't want to talk about anything that I know I didn't live and I know that isn't positive and isn't something I would want my mom to hear mm -hmm. or my nephews and my niece to hear. So that's when the rebel happened. Mm -hmm. Dark side happened when I was in the auto club. So shout out to everybody who's in the circuit, everybody who's an MC, SC, uh, TC, OMC. All this shit means shit. So yeah, everybody who's uh, okay. like that, that whole Sons of Anarchy shit is real. So shout out to everybody who's in the circuit. So we was in an all Spanish club. So the main president, OG, he was just like, yo, that's the dark side right there. You know, kind of making fun like, oh, we the niggas, we the black niggas right here. So that's the dark side. But I mean, it stuck. And then after that, we just stopped saying South Side. We just say dark side. And for me, when I say dark side, I unify you know the whole north and south side because there there was a big rift between those two like you can tell the difference between a north side nigga and a south side nigga shout out to my boss he's the only north side nigga i'm really cool with but i wanted to make sure that there was no i wanted to make sure that everything's unified and then dark side also too means you know the area that people forget about until it's time to gentrify so there's a dark side everywhere there's a dark side of detroit there's a dark side of wisconsin Wherever there's a place where people are, uh, feel forgotten about or you have to actually know somebody to go there, that's the dark side. So that's where dark side Jamaica very, Queens uh, comes from. Yeah. That's very deep. Okay. Yeah, I'm a deep guy. Listen. I see you. <laughs> Giggity. Um, <laughs> why did you even say that? No, I mean, everything. Yeah, I was hoping that he was, was just not. Nah, no, I mean, listen, I joke a kid. That, but yeah, there's a, there's a reason for everything. Like, I, um, yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, oh. <laughs> If you want to call in, the number is 646-867-7220. All right, so your first rap experience was at 9. Yep. You started recording around like 14, 15. Mm -hmm. um, when did you start performing? Uh, shit, my first real performance after the enact. Mm -hmm. Damn, I think that like must... as a rapper. As like, a rapper. I am now a rapper. This is what I want to do. I feel like it might have been right back at around 2010, 2011. That's when I came out with that first real... I came out with a few projects. Shout out to Mike Bostic once again. Me and him had a track called Get Up To Get It, which I think is still on my website. And it, once again, it's one of those positive songs where it's like, it sounds like a beautiful track to listen to in the morning. Like you're trying okay. to get up, you're trying to get it and everything like that. And honestly, it's not. It's a spot not too far from here. It used to be called Bungalow Lounge. Mm -hmm. It was me, him, a few North Side niggas, and a few South Side niggas. Like that's back in the day when niggas was actually unified. Like it was like 20, 30 of us packing the shit out, where it's just us. And we actually, it wasn't like we was just performing for each other. We actually brought out six or seven heads ourselves. So we mm -hmm. fucked up an entire venue. And yeah, I think that was one of my first real performances where I brought people out. I was actually performing. It was no stage, but I made sure that I was, you know, you gotta be creative. I threw somebody's jacket on the floor and I stood up on the chair and you, you just gotta be different. So I made a stage where there was no stage. I jumped over one of my friends and you know me, I'm right. out here, yeah. So what's <laughs> been your favorite performing experience? Favorite performing? Like, I got a few. I, I, mean, I just love performing. I love being on stage. I love doing what I do. Um, I think one of the most iconic ones had to be when I was at Privilege Lounge and I climbed that big ass fucking wall. Um, that was always one of those. Um, Brooklyn Colony doing the one year anniversary for WVMR. That meant a lot because I'm very proud of everything that mainstream has built. So that meant a lot to actually be a part of that. And then I was jumping on the banister. And even then, I don't think 
Yeah, I don't, yeah, I jumped on the banister, but before that, I jumped from the stage onto the bar. So there, there's a big enough gap where you can yeah. make that jump. I was so happy I did that. Nobody else was yeah. able to do that. Because once I do shit, the fucking owners be like, all right, you can't do that again. So. Well, I'm I mean, person, yeah. you know, I did it already, so that's what it is. Um, oh, no. Uh, also, I can't forget the one I, um, I had the pleasure of opening up for Mickey Fax last year in December. Oh, yeah. That was, that was dope. Um, I dressed up as, you know, Huey Newton. Mm-hmm. It was dope. I had a great time. So I think every every performance for its own reasons I have a lot of fun with. Um, I had the pleasure of um, Lumi D introducing me on stage when I was when I did my first show in Jersey. Mm-hmm. So that was dope. Um, yeah, every show has its own little something. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's little uh, highlighter. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Shout out to Lumi D too. Her um, and her manager, U R V. So you also you use it too much. I can't. Alright, so <laughs> we too much alike. Now <coughs> I know where this is going. You <laughs> is also a blogger. Yeah. You wrote for streetchemistry.com. That's a fact, yeah. How did that come about? Street Chem yeah, you know, that's why I named the first album Effort Never Dies. Because if you keep putting your effort into something, you're gonna reap the benefits. You just have to be um, coherent and observant about what's going on around you. Um I dropped the album. Matter of fact, all right, it's it's kind of a it's, it's a long story, but I'm gonna piece it together. Okay. Do it. Not not really Don't a long make story, it long, but all right. Want to talk shit nah. nah, nah, nah. I got you. I'm I got trying you. to get the interview part out. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, shout out to Microphone Bully TV. Shout out to Big Brother Biz and Sky High. I saw a tweet that they put out about um, they have a mixtape that they wanted that they were doing, and you could submit your work or whatever. So I did that, and I got introduced to him, and they had a mixtape release party. So when I went there, he introduced me to the DJ, which was DJ Instincts. So that's the DJ Instincts. And he still, somehow, someway, he had my information. And he was like, yo, I'm looking for writers for my website. And I was like, you know, I, yeah, mad random. <laughs> like, okay. He was like, I was like, yo, um, I appreciate the offer. I mean, I will, you know, see who I can find. Because right. I, I wasn't, I was not connected in the industry at this point. Yeah. I was like, yo, you know, I appreciate the offer, but I'm not a writer. Like, I'm just an artist, so I don't know if I can, you know, help you. Mm-hmm. So I'll never forget, he gave me a Ryan Leslie video. I, I forget what was the name of it, um, but it came out around 2012. So he was like, all right, watch this video. Let me know what you think. So in my professional opinion, as professional as it could have been at that sure. time, I gave him what I thought about the video. It was a dope video or whatever. So he was like, all right, cool. So he gave me like a little tidbits of what I shouldn't do, what I should do. And he was like, all right, uh, look at the website. I was like, all right, what am I looking at? He was like, you'll see. So sure enough, my what I said was actually posted. He was like, you're the new writer. Congratulations, you know, you're part of it. So after that, he started giving Thank me you. the breakdown. Yeah, he started I'm giving sure. me the breakdown of, you know, what we charge and what we do and how we move and little things like that. And that's how that started. And okay. all credit due to Big Brother Biz and Microphone Bully and DJ Instincts because, yeah, I was observing about the industry, the behind the scenes as a child and as an adolescent, but it was through street chemistry that I actually learned the ins and outs of the industry. I actually started to get cool with certain people and do interviews that I never thought was possible. And it was it was an amazing experience. So I was sad to see that the website was down and that, you know, we kind of moved on. Okay. But I definitely hold them dear to my heart and I'm definitely gonna have them on the show. So that's how street chemistry came along. Okay. Yeah. That's dope. Have you written for any of the blogs or websites? Yeah. Other than your own? Yeah, there was a small brief moment where I actually wrote, uh, wrote for a Microphone Bully. But out of loyalty and out of conflict of interest, I felt like I should just stick to street chemistry mm-hmm. because it's about the same. Oh, it was at the same time. It was, yeah, it was about the same type of content. So, right. you know, I felt like I was kind of running myself thin. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. That's Is why that something you see yourself like continuing to? Oh, yeah, facts. Yo, if you look at Darkside Radio NYC.com, I'm mm-hmm. the one doing all those blogs. And then if you look at, look at Voiceless Music, I'm the one doing a lot of those blogs as well. The ones that send the most shots. You know, like, I'm the show must go on. For, for the website. Yeah. 